That was silly. Sorry about leaving the audio off, guys. What are we looking at here? Getting everything connected, getting everything going. Time got away from me for a second there. How is everyone today? Don't know if I'm gonna do strict Node.js or screw around with a little React again today. We shall see. First and foremost, how loyal am I to myself? I am 33 loyal to me. Woot. Let's get to it. Wow. So yeah, I did a little bit of work on the weekend uh, outside of stream. I know, I know, sorry. But I was poking around and I had an idea and just said, you know what, I gotta finish this. So I added aliases. I may have done that on stream, but I also added a, a message type basically. Um, because of the way I was doing this, I didn't have any way of separating out uh, whether or not a message was going to just respond or whether a message was going to do something on the zombies back end or what have you, right? So uh, I started, I decided to start putting metadata in each one of the commands just so that I can get an idea of all right, what do I want this to do and how do I strip out the commands? And, wow, what's going on? Do, do, do. Let me see something real quick. OBS is sucking up the juice. What's your problem, OBS? Uh, maybe it's this nice line around me. 100% of one processor, though, shouldn't be that bad. Oh, well, whatever. Back at the ranch. Uh, so, yeah. We've got aliases now. We've got metadata about the type of commands that the zombie's going to be kicking out. Or that my zombie. <laughs> um, and then I also added the ability to say what type of command it is right now that's not in the metadata i may end up putting it in there but one of the issues i run into is that when i create this object if if at the long end of the the chain of save dot res meta dot res type i have something and it just doesn't exist then i run into a different type of error that i've got to figure out how to deal with but for now uh, where's one? Where's an example? Set, yeah, set requires a higher auth level, basically. Uh, when you, the first time the bot sees you, it's going to grab your user number, uh, your user number with Twitch, and it creates a, a small profile for you, basically. And that profile, at some point, I'm going to have to start tracking, like, is this a username that only ever said one thing? Okay, that's probably one of those bots. Let's just occasionally purge those. But for everybody else, it just keeps track of your preferences. And hopefully at some point it's going to keep track of a little bit more than that. Um, but that's, that's a bridge I'll burn when I come to it, right? Also, as a reminder... I won't be streaming tomorrow, um, and Thursday is going to be a bit of a crapshoot. Um, but and I want to talk. I wanted to talk about this. Kind of cool. I was trying to figure out the best way to go about uh, 
basically putting all of this together somewhere else quickly if I needed to. And uh, I did a little bit of research into it. Hang on, Pokemon. Pokey catch. All right, anyway. So I did a little bit of research into what I was going to need to do. Like how, how am I going to take all of this, uproot it, and put it somewhere else on a temporary basis? Um, it's something that could come up. It's something that has come up in, in that I've missed a week of streaming just because, well, I was somewhere else, you know, or I had to be somewhere that's down the street and just didn't have time to come over here, get everything set up and, and do it. Uh, I know it seems like I just slapdash this together, <laughs> but there's production value, I swear. Um, but anyway, I was looking into that and one of the, one of the more interesting things was just the idea of connecting all the stuff. Um, my primary camera is a smartphone and it uses, uh, OBS droid to use the Wi-Fi to connect back to my OBS and give me the, the camera. Uh, I have OBS Blade, which controls the actual stream. I have, you know, buttons over here like a, a stream deck, kind of. <laughs> and um, that also connects via Wi-Fi back to OBS. And then, of course, there's the bot connecting out and, you know, the, the VPN that I need to get back into my own uh, servers that when we go back to working on the home lab directly, you know, all of these things are, are things that I've been considering and trying to figure out what's needed. Anyway, long story short, I wanted to show you guys this. It's, uh, GL iNet. Uh, what was this one? This is the AXT 1800. It is basically just a, a Wi-Fi 6 enabled portable router um, takes it's powered off of USB-C uh, it hides the ability to be a file server as well as function keys over here and it's all done with DDWRT and it gives me the ability to essentially set all of this up so that it runs and I can just plug it in and go with it. I did a little bit of setting up last night and I'm honestly, I'm kind of impressed with it. It's a cool little box. We'll see after actually using it. But the idea is that basically if you're at a hotel, you're at somebody else's house, you're whatever, you can just take your laptop, connect to this guy, take all of my other stuff and I can just have it all connected through this. And it just shows as a single device, the VPN's built into it, and uh, it can, it's already set up to do uh, split stream VPN. So it'll only connect back into my home lab for the stuff that goes to the home lab. And then it'll do everything else through the regular internet. So I'm not getting lag. Uh, hopefully it's as cool as it says on the box, but uh yeah, if you're interested, I'm going to throw a link probably in the YouTube video to this. And I'm going to do it as an affiliate thing because why not? Uh, I'm not paid by them. I'm, I'm, I'm not yet endorsing it, but I did buy it and I am going to try it. And I'll let you guys know. That out of the way. Let's look at, let's go back to the bot. <laughs> So yeah, we've got all this uh, stuff set up. At some point, I'm probably just gonna expand out the the say commands. And my goal is to have it a little bit like, um, like some of the other Windows-based bots, non-server-based bots, where you just have an interface and you can punch in like, you know, I want this response for this command and this response for that command. And then maybe have a little bit more of a scripting language kind of built out so that I can edit it a little bit easier than doing this. So all of this will just end up, you know, in a database somewhere. Easy peasy. 
I also want to uh, have some of the, I want to have in the metadata, maybe a, an option for repeat. Say, I want this repeated every half hour, you know, for like the um, Learn K8. It's just a reminder, hey, these are the things you can go check out. Uh, or the website, the GitHub, you know, that sort of stuff. Dice go away. I also put a lot of work into the opt out. It's pretty robust now, actually. You can opt out and it will basically set a timer and say, hey, you've got 15 minutes. And at the end of that 15 minutes, it's going to opt you out. Right now, I have the option uh, removed that's going to delete everything, but it will delete everything. I mean, my intent is that if you're opt out, opted out, we're not storing any more data. <laughs> you're done. Um, but yeah, that's that's the idea. Just you just set timeout, and it just gets it on the next loop. Um, I had an idea when I jumped into Jern's. Uh, actually, is Jern going right now? Let me double check that real quick. Squirrel. Yes, Jern is currently going. So I'm, I'm up against Jern right now, which, whatever. But uh, Irish John Games, if, if you're into the whole game dev side of things, one of the first channels that I stumbled across on my own, uh, outside of being drawn here like 70% of people <laughs> by Thor. Um, yeah, he's just finished partner pushing and he's kind of in that uh maintained stage of that it looks like he's doing fine he's got like 200 people but you know check him out cool stuff uh he got me initially interested in in doing a bot before i ran across the greatest bot i've ever seen uh with set Elix's channel which is right here his, his bot is kind of ridiculous. But I'm going to put Jern on in the background because I like having uh, something up there to take a peek at occasionally. I think I want to make sure if I'm going to keep this, the Pokemon community game here, I need my bot to ignore anything that starts with Pokey. <laughs> Because otherwise, that's going to get interesting fast, huh? More water. So yeah, my uh, my Friday stream was interesting. Nine hours at a rate of fifty people. That was crazy. Oh yeah, and this one, I. It's so dumb, but a lot of times I like just making things that should be a U and E in my head. So I was like, lurk. Uh, I want an alias for lurk. I, I want this to actually do something too. Like set a status so that maybe it, it, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do with it, but I, it would be nice to just kind of Maybe it's on a status screen where I can look and be like, oh, these people are just lurking. I don't know. <laughs> and I added the, the shout out. This one was kind of interesting because this was the first one where this was actually the reason that I needed to make this response type because I'm using just the WebSockets API. I've kind of ditched the... Uh, the first three methods that you always find when making a, a bot. Uh, the first one being the the Twitch API, uh, or not the Twitch API, but the, the Twitch SDK. Um, is it a package? No, I think it's a package. Twitch.js. No, 
the heck is it called? It's the first one. Oh, TMI.js. This, this is the first one that pretty much always comes across. But it is just chat integration. That's it. it like Most of the other stuff that you want to do becomes problematic if you want to do anything more than just chat. And realistically, I could have left this in there, but... Chat's kind of the low-hanging fruit. It's the easy part. Uh, if I couldn't get chat with WebSockets on my own, then then what am I doing here, right? So then I moved up to uh, interacting with the 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 IRC channel with uh, the API directly, and that was. That was thanks to what the heck? Hang on. I don't care. Sorry, I guess my my home R instance got taken care of or got rebooted again. Probably when the power went out and I just haven't been back to it since then. Uh, the next one was this guy, Barry Carleon. Um, he actually has a Twitch channel. Uh, and it's shocker, I know, but um, dude, I'm not that kind of site. I should have blurred that stuff out, but whatever. Um, he goes or they go quite a bit farther into the the various methods of interacting with the api and, and different ways of of doing event sub and like everything here uh i'm gonna throw it i'll throw it in the chat too everything here is just another interesting way of of doing the thing and the amount that doing the thing the way that he shows it uh and breaking that and fixing it and and rebuilding it in a way that made sense it, it taught me a lot um it also taught me how little i knew about like i know a bit about coding i've always joked that i'm a terrible programmer uh my little bit of programming is generally focused around node.js because uh it's an easy inroad but yeah it definitely showed me how little i actually know about it and it's helped me kind of kind of push past that which is the point and a big point is that, you know, I'm doing it as I'm doing it. I'm explaining it to my duck, the camera. Shout out Tom Middleton. <laughs> All right. So history out of the way. Um, actually, is that currently broken? Let me check something. Oh, that's not going to work because it's a command. Yeah, but I, oh no, there we go. Okay, good. That's something I do need to do still too. Uh, right now it disappears. The text in my video disappears. So it should be over there, right? Yeah, disappears way too fast. Um, I wanted it to slowly fade out and just kind of go, boop, I'm done. Um, and the only time I even want it to slowly fade out is if it's been there for like an hour, not 30 seconds, uh, I think is what I've got. But all of that happens on the React side, so I'm not really there at the moment. Um, all right, so where were we? Where was I getting to? Oh yeah, I created all of these. I uh, created a new one for shoutouts. Um, one thing I'm doing right now that I'm not a huge fan of is every action at some point comes back to this to get the user ID. And I think I need to start storing that user ID because... 
I don't like reaching out to the Twitch API honestly twice for almost every command because it's got to make sure of the channel and get the channel ID and then it's got to make sure of the user and get the user's ID number. Um, and that feels like something that I should be storing. What am I looking for? I am looking for SQLite. And I don't know if I am right now. Drag this over here. Because I don't want to share my key. Okay, so I do have the chatter's user ID number. So why am I not using that? So let's go over here. I'm also not understanding why code is hanging the way it's hanging. I of course did, it, it pops up and says, hey, you've got an update. Would you like to do that now? Of course, yeah, why wouldn't you want to update? You should always update. <sighs> should you should you really always update <laughs> all right this is also another thing i think i need to break more of this out because this is one big old chunk of code that does a lot of things. Granted, a lot of this is logging. But like, where is it? It's uh Authorize, authorize. Actually, I think I've moved the majority of them now. Come to think of it, it might only be here. Options.channel, this.auth item. Oh, yeah, 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 no. I'm still. So it's right there. I should send get user ID. So I think what I want to do um, is in here where I get the user ID, I should first check and see like, hey, do you, uh, is this something you already have? So let's, let's do that. Uh, let me make sure I'm on main. Okay, I'm on main. Let's hop into Gitia real quick and let's make an issue. We're gonna make a new issue and I'm gonna say this it's not really a bug, or it's not really a feature, but it's also not really a bug. Um, but I think I'm going to label it as a bug. It's kind of an enhancement, but we don't have a branch for it yet. But we're going to call it uh, before calling Twitch API. Because, like I said, if we're saving it, why, why go out to Twitch first? Currently all user checks go to Twitch to convert 
username to user ID number. I don't think that's what it's called, but basically close enough. Close enough is good enough. Yeah. Technically, this is UI UX level one. That's kind of basic stuff at this point. Oh, you know what? I also need sidetrack. I need my Discordian. And just in case anyone be interested. Throw this in here. I'll do it in the self promo in. Pirates. And I know you guys are super happy about more Pokemon. Ooh, I got rare magnet friend and fastball. Cool. All right. Let's get back to it. Nothing to it, but to do it. We've got our issue. It's, <laughs> I really, really should put together just a template that I can copy and paste this sort of stuff into, but mm, what are you going to do? Not that. All right. So what we need to do is we need to pull in, uh, Oh, that's not in here yet. Hmm. 1200. It kind of makes me want to move this back over here. And then here, just assume that that ID is always a number, right? I mean, like the send, I don't think I'm using this send chat message anymore. I'm using this send chat message. So that doesn't even need to be there anymore. Before we get too far down this road, let's do. Uh, what we decided this bug was going to be called too many API call. <laughs> sound good, sound good. What was our issue number? 51. And we can reload here. Make sure that we have too many nope bug too many subscription it shouldn't be there anymore we fixed that a while ago oh like it's all good but i need to push it I need to go back and figure out why that's still there and delete it. It needs to not be there. Oops, wrong one. What is that? Oh, that's the Barry Carlton. All right. 
boom, boom, boom. Not too many subscriptions. You are now. Too many API call. There we go. I do, for the most part, I like a lot of these songs. And it's funny because it's just some random video game music that was on a... Uh, crap, what's that? I don't know. Well, it was, it was on a deal. Uh, Humble Bundle. It was on a Humble Bundle. And, I mean, I have hundreds of these songs. A lot of them are just different variations on, you know, the same song. But... Still, there's lots of them. All right. And you know what? What's funny is I know that there is. Oh. Oh, cool. I can just reference it and it'll show up. I thought I had to reference it in a certain way. Nice. No, I was just about to say there's a way to do it. And I did it. What are you going to do? This. All right. So what I need to do is decide, is this going to happen here? Or is this going to go back to happening over here? Because if it's going to be happening over here, and I need to rewrite some of these so that instead of getting the user ID, they assume that this is the user ID. Because here they all do the, this client ID, which is up here. But then also, wait, which is, yeah, shout out. So this has, yeah, there we go. This is a long call. <laughs> User add a mod author. See, and that, that's where it gets interesting is that like in this one, I've got to send three separate user IDs to do a shout out. Well, the bot has to do three separate ones. So it needs the, the person that's getting shouted out. And then it needs the channel that it's, that's getting, that it's coming from the broadcaster channel. And then it needs the ID of the bot or the mod. So in that case, I'm sending an, a single item that has all of those. But I do build that over here. And I think actually... Let's put this away... Oh no, it is in here. Like I said, this is kind of, I don't like having one big function that just takes care of everything, but this, that's kind of what this is right now. <laughs> I mean, it's got a switch case and then I open this up and it's got another switch case inside of it. And like the, the, channel chat message is huge but again a lot of it is debugging and notes to myself i mean what are we looking at realistically we're going from 110 70 lines of code that's not that big not ideal but Slack off. Well, 
Well, it's kind of funny. For those of you on <laughs> YouTube, I added the Pokemon community game. And you're not seeing any of that in the chat window, so... What can I say? Alright, so where does the user item get created? It is, I think, right around here. Oh, I create it. I create it specifically for the shout out in this case. And like this one, I'm gonna, the argument, the way that works basically is, uh, let's open a text editor real quick. <laughs> Free certificates for everybody. Luckily, it was only the public cert, but anyway, let's close that. new all right so the way it works now is a command comes in right so you do in this case shout out uh bob barker i don't know why I, that was the first thing that came to mind but it is that is separated into, well, it's separated into here, and then raw command, and then argument. Actually, you know what I don't think I have? I don't think I have, I don't have anything for, yeah, that's not a real person. <laughs> I, I can't, sorry, I can't find that person. It, it should probably be able to handle the situation where I fat finger someone's name. We'll do that too, after we figure this out. So no matter what, argument is only ever going to be a text username. And not, not a user login, but a user name. So argument, I am always going to need an API call to validate. The other two I have. So the other one is the Twitch channel. Now that one is the Twitch channel, but it's not the Twitch channel number. That's the Twitch channel name. So maybe I, maybe I need to stick with it being over here and I just need to add more, more database code to that one. I mean, there is also the fact that, like, realistically, I don't need to send this. I can just get it. It doesn't really need to be included because it is in the, the environment. So that's already duplicating work. I can get rid of that, kind of. I could also just change the, <laughs> that particular environment variable to the ID. It's not like that's something that's going to change. But, okay. But this, right now, is kind of... Well, no, all three of these are the same thing. Because this, again, is just an option that's set 
up here and again it's just that which means I should do if I'm gonna go that route I should go that route all the way right because my point was that if I needed to change those, I wanted it all the way up at the top, right? I didn't want to have to go into another folder. I didn't want to have to do anything else. So if I have this, then I also need to use that. That looks cleaner anyway. I should actually look for any place that I'm using this there this item sequelize find one where tag yeah let's change that out And where's our next one? Yeah, that's that's going to be different. <laughs> All right, cool. So, I mean, a little cleanup. Not exactly what I was meaning to do, but okay, cool. Well, let's just... Okay. Uh, so, we, we were deciding... We do want to just add the database calls over here as well. So let's grab all of that stuff. Sequelize. I think I've already got the logger. I think I need anything else because I'm pretty sure this does all of it. Yeah, it gets all the models and all of that fun stuff. Auth message user options. Yep. I need to get rid of in the database right now I have a a table called new messages from a previous attempt that I think needs to go. Yes, and we'll write changes. All right. Now at least we won't be getting mixed up on that. quick and yes it is Pokemon related boom, boom, boom. I need to pop this out and do a quick trade here, electric and kind of garbage. Trading, yes. What do we get? Uh, Togepi, average. Well, can't complain. I mean, I could, but who cares? Cool. 
All right. Now that can go away again, and we're back. And we were here. All right, so we're including sequelize. Nope, we don't want that, just the constructor. And I pretty much always have to look at this again just to be like, what did I do? Oh yeah. Save chat is easy. We can do So this creates it and makes sure that it's global, which is kind of what I would prefer. I, well, no, I want to return it. Yeah, we're going to go with returning it each time. So step the first we want. But it's not going to be ID auth item. In this case, we just need ID. Let this dot get user data, but that's not what it's going to be. It looks a bit like this. It's funny. I, Microsoft Code has specifically trained me to right-click and copy, and then they change this context menu so that if you're anywhere near the bottom, it becomes a scrolly dealy. And copy is all the way down here. I understand the majority of people control C, control V. I don't know when it started happening to me, but it did start happening to me where control C didn't always work. It sometimes it would copy something else I, probably something i was doing but if i did right click and go to copy i could be 99 percent sure that i in fact copied that line although as of late control c control v has been just dandy just you know a joy. All right, but we are looking at not key data. In this case, we are looking for Do I put it in user options? Please tell me I put it in user options. If I didn't, I, that means that the only place it is is in messages, and that would be <sighs> that would be dumb. Yeah, okay. It's it's under user ID. Um but what I'm looking for is not where tag, even though tag is kind of my standard. I'm looking for user name is ID. And in theory, now I should be able to console.log use data Oop, what's going on cannot read properties of undefined I don't own that ball. 
squirrel. You can continue purchase you. I assure you, I own that ball. Is that a shiny? I got a shiny Finian. Nice. Totally worth it. It's a garbage fish, but that's all right. It's my garbage fish. <laughs> all right, what do you mean there is no find one? All right, so I'm looking at, wait. Right, it's, it's not labeled as user options. It is just options. And we do need to let that mean something. Shiny. What? Why did that happen? Like 15 times. Am I going to need to say where this is being called from? Because get user ID should not be called right at startup. But you know what? In the interim, oh, you know what? That's that's an issue right there. I am just running it that way. I need all of the datas. See, why did this happen? Based on this, it's making me think that it's it's happening in auth. Why is that taking so long? That's concerning. I mean, here I definitely have not. Yeah, here I don't do anything where I'm calling outside. So it has to be happening in here. So let's change what we're looking to. And this is, we'll just look for message sender dot anything, right? Oh, now we're looking for this. Okay, well that shouldn't be coming up. That also isn't a part of it, not a part of it. Here's two, That's but that's just for send chat message. Right. 
I gotta turn my notifications off. There. Handled. Apparently not. Uh, that's not what I wanted. I'll just do airplane mode. That'll work. Alright, so here we're getting the user ID. Twice, but that's for sending a chat message. So like that shouldn't be an issue. Wait, get user options channel. So this is getting the ID for the channel. And I feel like that's something that should be saved. But it's also, it's getting it to log it. Like that doesn't seem like a great idea. Uh, but then it runs it for each thing for the bot user, the channel. Okay. I don't think it needs this. I guess it do. So yeah, it goes it goes out and gets all three of those for every wow, that's a lot of setup. No, it should definitely only be doing that once. Okay. The interesting part is that we're gonna need the channel. The channel needs to be separate. So what does that look like? I mean, I can't really set an option for the channel ID, can I? I mean, it doesn't really match with the other data that's in there. But I could also, I mean, just, just setting it so it looks for the individual users. I think is more worthwhile. All right, so we're going to we're going to do that. We're going to at least get the user ID for anything that we can. But that's a problem. model dot options what we want to do for the sake of argument let's do it this way uh, we need to Get user ID, user data. And then we also want the ID. All right, so it's saying it cannot find those, but I mean, I'm kind of looking at them a little bit, a little bit. Um, oh, that's going to be interesting though because 
if it sends the channel ID through, it's going to return. It's going to return my ID because they're the same thing. And that doesn't work. So do I send type? That's kind of what I got to do again. Like it should be able to validate it on its own, but I'm going to get errors where that's not a channel ID. All right, so we'll just add options. Yeah, that is a blah, 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 blah. That's, that is a lot. But why aren't you getting where username? Am I using find one wrong? Let's look at this. So what I want is the ID. Return name. We'll return username and description. But where's where does the where go? from the table unless restricted by something like aware I mean there should only be one in there. That's not a good thing. But it's still saying no. <laughs> Is it because of how I'm calling it? It's all done as an await, so it should definitely be waiting for it.
that's a big old chunk of data. Did someone just say something? <laughs> A wild ball toy. I'll take that as a yes. Something just said something. All right. Where were we? Man, we're trying to find out why gets sent through I need to check something real quick Update stage views or actor window drag helper is on because it needs an allocation. I think this is my pause that's happening. Let's go track this down real quick because this stutter is getting on my nerves. Oh, interesting. It's my doc. Thanks. Not my problem. <laughs> oh, that's that's just such a such a tech response. This Ubuntu that doesn't really help me. When you experience a freeze again, reboot with this. All right, nothing particularly useful there. Oh, well, that's another one. X set. Command not found. Oh, but that's OBS being OBS. Well, every time I... Interesting. That's fun, huh? We having fun or what? So maybe... Let's see if we can't... Force it to happen over here. Exec, exe cheap, exec heap.
Is it code that's doing it? So what do you think? Is it exec heap or exe cheat? It just happened again, whatever it was. And that's that right there is pretty much all OBS. But like right now it's happening on Chrome. Off screen. Yep. Service stop system D. What? Package. Oh, just package kit. Okay. Now, I'm going to leave this running in the background and I'll come back to it and poke around afterwards. That can go away. Bring you back. All right, so why are you not seeing it? I still need to figure that out. I'm definitely getting the username. Is it supposed to be user options? I'm pretty sure that's just the name of the database. Yeah, it's just it's just going to be options. Right? SQLize define option. No, because the, the model is named options with a lowercase o. Okay. So SQLize.models.options find one where the username is the same as ID. That shouldn't that shouldn't be rocket surgery. be missing something in the way that that's set up. Because it definitely shouldn't be null. do that. All right, it found nothing that time. No limit. Oh yeah, it doesn't like doing that. We're going to. I should have just deleted it. Like so. Uh, no. No, no, 
that. All right, so I'm definitely getting that. Let's switch this to find one. And now it should only be the first one each time. But it is going to be each time. <laughs> All right, so find one. Now let's add a where. Is it because I had it in quotes? It is because I had it in quotes. Where were you on that chat? Although, eh, never mind, it still says no. But that is because ID doesn't exist in there. So, but still, it's because it was in quotes. I'm not saying it was because it was in quotes, but it's because it was in quotes. That's not a thing. Still saying no. Do I need to do... Oops. That. No. Where? Got the two brackets and close it out. Oh, geez. That's going to be null as well, because I'm looking for a username. <laughs> Oops, that's backwards. There we go. All right. Let's get rid of that console. Well, actually... Uh, dot user ID. There we go. That gives us the number. So let's do this. If user data equals no, we can get rid of you. Then we do all of this stuff. Else. Um. Oh, we need actually just did it again cut uh oh no we're just gonna put that there User data dot user ID. Unexpected identifier send shout out. What? Oh, I'll probably. Yeah, I've got a missing thing in here.
Do you need another tab? still want a log oh okay so the trace is only going to happen here if the user doesn't exist now we're, we've still got a problem in that technically the user is going to exist even though the user doesn't exist when I'm looking at channels I missed a pillow swine so busy talking to you guys Ah, distracting me. How dare you. Gonna need some more water soon, too. That'll be next. Alright. In probably about a half hour. So, we also need to make sure that there's a difference between a user ID and a channel ID. So I'm gonna need to say if user data equals null or options Dot type or just options. I'm still going to have a problem here because this is users. So actually, yeah, if options dot type. I just need to not use this function because this function is built around the idea of getting user IDs. So actually, I'm just going to copy you. I'm going to pasta you. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of options. I'm going to get rid of this if. I'm going to get rid of this else. We're going to change this from users. Interestingly enough. Is, is my user ID and my channel ID the same number? All right, time to go to the Twitch API. Um, let's bring up yieldy reference. All right, so we want get channel information. Channels. Okay, so no, it works no matter what. It should be fine either way because it's not showing me something different. It's got the channel name. But if, if getting the channel data 
returns the same thing as the broadcaster ID. Right? Tag CCLs is branded. Okay, so yeah, it's just broadcaster ID, which is the same as my user ID. Drugs intoxication is enabled. Hmm. I did drunk stream once and I didn't enable that. Whoops. I don't recommend it. It's not ideal. <laughs> All right, so this is fine. I probably should rename it from user ID to like get ID number, but I don't think I need to break anything for that to work. But it means that I need to get rid of, that's got the if. All right, let's get rid of the one that I just recreated. So yeah, the first thing it's going to do is just see, hey, do I already have this? If yes, cool. Call that done. Um, I should probably put a debug in there. Which is... Dot get user ID. Uh... Maybe put that like all caps or something. Yeah, because that lets me know that at least I'm I'm getting it from my own data. <laughs> I'm getting it like 10 times. I'm getting it. It's kind of bad that I'm getting the same data so often, but that's only at startup, and that's, I'm okay with, I'm kind of okay with that. Uh, ideal? No. But acceptable? Sure, why not? All right, so next step. Um, well, no, this is, this we're calling done. We can push this. Actually, it's not, it doesn't first check, so. First check database for ID. Um, if exists, use that. Otherwise, go ask daddy twitch API. Too many API call. All right. Switch over to main. Let's get back into this. Get it. We'll smoosh them together. It's entirely because of this song that I did a full playthrough of a Shadowrun game. This song. Create the merge, delete the branch, do the thing. Oh, I didn't put any of this stuff in there. I wonder if I should have put like a note of... All right, let's go over to our issues. 
and complete. Not meant to end close. Woot. Wait, why do I have an outstanding pull request? All right, let's let's look at that. Like, hang on, what? Did I not finish this? I did do some minor fix fixes. Let's see what it looks like. I might be declining this. <laughs> if it can't, if it can't, uh, well, we'll see what happens. But yeah, if it, if it has a problem with it, we're just going to have to accept that there's going to be a problem and get rid of it. It merged. Oh, it's in progress. Oh, I think this, yeah, this is just me cleaning up the test folder. So in general, it gets rid of general. All right. I, honestly, I'm not... Maybe I can't approve my own pull request. Don't you know who I am? <laughs> I own you, server. I own you. Man, on my stream on Friday... Uh, someone was talking about a plugin for RimWorld that allows the community to jump in and make changes to your game while you're playing it. That game is hard enough, but holy cow, I can't even imagine what some of you jerks would do. <laughs> All right, so we've got all our merges there. We're on, we're back on main. Let's make with the poll. Got all the new datas. And you know what? I said I was going to get water in about a half hour, but this seems like a good place to do it. So, un momento. Herb.
And the be right has happened. I found a... Yeah. I just found a mod that <laughs> puts a line around me, and I kind of like it. It matches a little bit closer with my uh, logo. <laughs> All right, so what are we doing now? What is our plan? Um, we fixed it so it's not reaching out as much. I guess we just take a look. What have we got to do? Hey, come on. I'm still getting used to the way Fedora does this. Because I was, I was really used to, with uh, Ubuntu, you double click on something. And then that gives you just that window. But I'll bet that's just probably a, a GNOME, GNOME Tweaks setting or something along those lines. Whatever. Alright. No WebSocket connection validation. When keep alive stop doesn't try to reconnect, but does continue. Actually, no, I've already fixed that. Um, I don't remember which branch fixed that. It may have actually been the too many subscriptions. Which I need to revisit. Actually, if that is still floating out there. Did I pull it and just forget to delete it? Too many subscriptions. Yeah, that was merged two weeks ago. So... We need to go to branches. There we go. And let's do a little cleanup. Uh, feature nudes overlay, I think, is still in place. This is already part of. This is merged, so I'm going to get rid of you. You're merged. Resolve too many subscriptions. So you can go. Um, okay, and that just shows my deleted ones. Why does it say that that's deleted? Let's do the old E. We're on main. We already did a poll. We're up to date. Okay. Like right now, as far as branches go, a lot of these are gone. Like this one is just, I'm not doing it anymore. Well, I've already done it. So there's nothing I'm going to merge back in there. 2.0 is already there. Add info, add info log to refresh. I've already done that. That's that was implementing the logger dot using logger instead of uh, console dot log. All right. So right now I've got the version two, which is what I've been working off of uh, at the feature page admin. Page admin and React backend, those are supposed to be the same thing. Uh, technically, this isn't, or this is included because it is, it's that white, this, which has nothing going on, but it's here. <laughs> but I haven't 
put any more effort into it because I'm moving over to this. So since this is already included and I'm not going to move forward with it anymore, I can get rid of it. <laughs> well, I can get rid of that branch. And technically, it's not version 2.0. I mean, it's realistically, I'm not even version one yet because I don't have I don't have a UI, I don't have anything. But version 2.0 was just me going from my IRC, working with IRC or working with the uh, the Twitch SDK to doing it on my own. So, but it is included. So I think I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to get rid of version 2 for now. Or I'm going to get rid of what I call version 2 because I've merged everything in. So right now... Oh, store chats can go away. I'm definitely storing the chats. There's nothing I'm going to put in there. So right now I've got an overlay for news, which is kind of there uh as in well it's it's something that i did manually in obs and i would like to have a, an overlay that has like a ticker and all that sort of stuff so let me do i have a feature set up around that and honestly what's different from main uh -huh. No WebSocket connection validation. That is still true. That's kind of a... That's pie in the sky. I don't know if I'm going to be validating all of the async. But that's when I started messing around in the test folder. That is definitely a comeback to. <laughs> that is a much bigger project. I mean, that sh actually, that should be a project all, all unto itself. And especially as I'm continuing to write async. Um, validate all async calls are I'm just I'm honestly I'm gonna need a a task for all of the asyncs in this file, all of the asyncs in this file, because there's a lot of them. Because I found, I did find one where uh, it just, because of the nature of where it was and the things that happened before it, it, just happened to be returning most of the time and then I would occasionally get an error and I didn't know what it was so tracking it down I found out that it was just one random stupid async that on occasion would get unlucky and not return in time uh Great task for each. Uh, JS file that includes and check off each function. I mean, that's, that's kind of it. Then, you know what I should also do? Uh, let me edit you and to do automate it with mocha maybe 
I've never done a whole lot of automated testing. Sue me. Just not something I do a lot of. All right. So I can go to here. I can set this project to this. Are there... Like, is there a status I can throw on here that is not open, but... Maybe later? <laughs> um, duplicate end user... Yeah, ideation, right? There's no... I'm not really putting any work into it yet. Or I don't want to. I do want to create a safe field for the bot. But I still... I need the basic... The basic UI. That might be where I'm starting. So it looks like we are going to be doing some React. Which... Which means we're going to have some reading. Because <laughs> we're going to be out of all of this and into... Hey, where'd client go? Oh, client into client. Oh yeah, and I have a backup of the other one that I made. I'm really not a fan of the idea that I'm running it as a client server, but because a lot of these API calls realistically could, or they are client API calls, right? But whatever. Let's go into client. And what do I have in client? What are my start options? I guess just start. Could not determine executable. Complete log can be found in. Am I just starting it wrong? I mean, I haven't copied this down from anywhere. So why would it have an issue? Like, all of... Oh, well, no, it's got node modules. Yeah, it's got all of the things. Tyrogue. Actually, quick, quick poke check. What's my inventory look like well let's see did i catch him how how did fennekin or fennekin fennekin must have been a quest completion right yeah monotype pokemon i was like how did that come after Anyway, I know, super interesting, but uh, I'm just after my money, my monies. And I am currently 35 loyal to myself. What's the crown? Well, I don't care, not my issue.
All right, I have to be starting this wrong, so let's see. Um, let's go to the W3 React tutorial. This is kind of what I was getting into. So we've got the import, blah, blah, blah. How does React work? Get started. Here we go. No, it says npm start should do it. Or maybe that's the problem. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing npx. I just, it is what it is. All right. State false. Oh, I was checking to see if the uh, the ports were. Why would the why would it say that? All right. Let's put you away. Let's get back into this. What change was made here? Why are you yellow? One, oh, one problem in this file. React hook use effect has a missing dependency. New message, either include it or remove the dependency array. Const new message equals use state. Okay, so do I need to have that in here? And that's okay. And then it'll stop yelling at me. Cool. So this is connected to this, the use effect. I have on connect, on disconnect. Oh, this is all, so this, um, in case you weren't with us when we did this one, this is all based off of uh, Socket.io's socket connection, uh, web socket code, basically. And I had taken out the new message because I wanted all messages, right? So now if I hop back over to my window, come to my, I know, terrible. All right, state is false. If I do test, oh, right. But I'm not even looking at that. I actually don't even care about that state false. All I care about is more tools, developer tools. We want the console. I feel like I set this up every single time. I wonder if it gets into the other versions and then gets gets or gets out of the other versions and then gets molded back down uh, cores origin one let's get a refresh oh Download the React tools for a better development experience. Test again. All right, so we're getting it. We're getting the broadcaster, we're getting the name. We're getting the message. Cool. Now, one thing that we do need, why is this showing as a React app? Um, that was interesting to me, but whatever. So the way this, this is already set up in a little bit like a react where it's 
individual apps uh, that get included back in. That's just part of the templating that I was using, right? So chat's coming through undefined, undefined. That's fine. Uh, one thing it's not getting that I need it to get is, is this currently authorized? So let's go about building this top part first. So if I look in here and I go to, in this case, views. And I'm no longer using these guys. I'm using pages. First up is index. And we want the partial header. So we've got the title. We've got a bunch of extra CSS. up head versus yeah head versus header eh, same thing what's the difference right um all right so to do that same thing not you uh, we can close you we don't need you at all all right to do that exact same thing up above This is kind of right in the way, isn't it? Hmm, whatever. I'm going to start closing some of these that I don't need. Header, my form. All right, header just kind of gives us our basics. So now we are looking at components. Now, am I doing this the same way? That's one of the things I'm not 100% on with React. So. still doing the voodoo here did I really just close the I did That's what we want. React directly in HTML. Nope. 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 So I guess I just created div, which is the header. I can put it all in the app for now. Oops, that's not the one I want. That's the one I want. So I've got header.ejs here. Can I really, you think I can just copy pasta that into the app? That's not what I wanted. I want to be able to go back and forth. There we go. So if I look at the app.js, I've got these functions, right? And then here's the actual div area. Uh, what I want is 
Will it take nav? I'm just curious. Like, yeah, I didn't think that was a thing that was going to work. I think that was just because of the way that that scripting language worked. So we're just going to do... Actually, I could probably just copy all this, all right? Boom, boom, boom. We pasta it. We'll get rid of this and we make it a div. And get rid of that. Actually, we can get rid of all of that. So why are you why are you being a jerk about it? So the entire thing is wrong if adjacent JSX elements must be wrapped in an enclosing tag. See what it looks like. All right, it's a start. Invalid DOM property class. Oh, right, right, right. Cause they need everywhere it's class. It needs to become class name. still doesn't like my class but <laughs> we're a step closer now part of that is because I don't have the top level uh, which is probably here right yeah app so I have React strict mode and then render app Which means, realistically, I should have app be a little more separated. But that's okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. Um, create element by ID. How do I add... Like, there's an index.css, right? Is that just automatically... Okay, yes, it is. How do I add external CSS? Let's look at that. Hi, Jern. External ESS React. You can create a new style CSS in your directory and add it inside inline CSS. Cool. You can also 
also add scoped styles. Without touching CSS. See, this, <laughs> this just becomes another language. Like, it's not CSS, but it's using CSS on the back end. There's a lot of tutorials that just kind of, oh yeah, just put the class name and then just put all this garbage behind it. Don't worry about what it means. You don't have to deal with that. You're not trying to learn that anyway. And it's like, ah, uh, that sucks. And there you have it. So useful. Such, such use. All right. So can I do an import with a URL? Because like the way that the way that this is set up or not this the way this is set up I've got my own and then there's like I need these I don't need the scripts thankfully I might need jQuery I don't know if I do but I, I want the, the style script So let's, I wonder if that can, if that's different. We want. Flake fish food, Sanrio seven. Can't update stage views. Yeah. What was I looking for? CSS into React app. Create a GitHub repository, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, super useful Cloudflare. Um, React CSS import not working. adding JSX in HTML file and script bottom of body what to reference assets in the public folder you need to use an environment So can I just throw a regular link tag in there? Is that what this is saying? I can't do that. I don't know how people get used to the idea to that kind of importing. You can include styles from a CDN through your index, like below. <laughs> I'm putting it here to remember that I solved it. <laughs> That's uh, smart. Very smart. Go 
down inside your node modules and find slick carousel inside of it find slick and slick If I add CSS to the index from the CDN, but I'd rather avoid that network call as I believe it's affecting the rendering of the page. All right. Let's, let's just, I'm going to grab this. We're going to copy you. We're going to hop over to uh, uh, index. And I'm going to do that. And hey, look. Perfect. Third-party cookie will be blocked in future Chrome versions as part of privacy. Okay. What was connection refused? Did it reboot because... No? might just be part of starting up I mean <laughs> in other words it's it's a problem but it's not my problem all right so cool yeah you can just add them that way ideal probably not but we're getting the right state now one issue is that I would rather have state like up here so maybe what I need to do is hop over here. I need to make a new file, which is going to be uh, menu bar .js. Oops, and it forgot. Camel case, but caps in the front. No cap. Some cap. And I'm basically just going to tear this part out. Goodbye. Goodbye. I don't know why this return is fine. Um but this return is not fine. But I mean, this is gonna become automatic anyway, right? So I'm not too worried about it. Let's grab this chunk. We're gonna copy and pasta it. I guess that can go away. And I'm out of cut. And we're going to paste. Now, we can't call it events anymore. We'll call that good. Now, does all this get added with app? Connection state and that. And here. 
it just pulls app. So if I do like that. And then I say menu bar. Does not contain a default export imported as menu bar. Neither does events. So what's the problem? I'm getting it. Why is that not a problem for any of these? Attempted to import does not contain a default export imported as menu bar. Default import as menu bar not found. Possible exports menu bar. What? I'm sure someone knows what I did wrong there, but <laughs> all right. So that was fun. I think I need some water. curious though why why does this work yay more new unown like I understand that it needs to be a default but why does this work Import React and you import socket. You export a single function and that's it. And it's got a return. You export a single function and it's got a return. This isn't actually showing up. Do I not have 
No, I have events. Is it because I don't have a class name? Because this class name is app and it does these two things. Do I need, actually, do I need to do it this way? the difference between these is it because I put all the class names in there I mean that one returns a single line but this returns properly Oh, that's funny. I did forget to charge my main camera. It is charging now. I unplugged it to test the router. <laughs> Great. I mean, and this one is multiples. No, no, it's still only one. I do think this is where I'm going to call it for the day. It's a little bit early, but uh, I've got a lot of stuff to do today and to prepare for future endeavors, such as taking this on the road. Um, I don't have this quite up here making sense yet. But I do have it at least kind of doing what it was doing, right? I mean, to start. Well, actually, that's not true. It's not doing anything that it was doing, but what it was doing wasn't a whole lot either. Right now, it's, the only thing I really need to do to make it match up is make it so that this actually validates whether or not the uh, connection exists and I need to include chat or I, I, honestly I just need to include the events which I'm not sure why that's not coming through I'll have to do some console logging or something along those lines. But again, I think that is it for today. If you uh, hung out and lurked, thanks. Good to see you. Or would have been good to hear from you, but whatever. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube and you made it this far, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for giving me some of your day or night or whatever. And... Uh, just keep beating your head against it, right? Have a good day, night, whatever it is. Take care. That's what I mean to say. <laughs>